Welcome to Echoes of the Eye. Let's presume that you've done the hook and you're ready to start on the, the stranger itself. What's your experience? Well, let's talk about that because that design is pretty important. So once you've discovered the stranger, you can easily tag it so you can easily discover it again. And you can see it's a short jaunt, 12 kilometers from where you start, closer than most other planets. That's important because you're going to need to make this journey hundreds of times. Another thing that's rather nice is that when you actually reach the stranger, they put on the brakes for you. So you can hit the stranger going a thousand meters a second and nobody will care. Magic. So this is what the stranger looks like. Sort of. We'll get around to that. From this angle, it looks like a barrel held in a vice, which is more or less correct. And obviously, this is the main entrance, right? Wrong. There are actually four entrances to the stranger. Three on this side and one on the other side of the barrel. Well, when you first reach the stranger, you're actually going to go in on the other side of the barrel because you're coming in from the satellite rather than from Timber Hearth. You're coming in from the exact opposite angle. So that means that what we're seeing here is actually the second entrance you use. The first entrance looks almost identical, but it has a ship hanging in the center here. Uh, and the reason why this matters is simply because the three entrances on this side are something that you might discover if you first come over here, right? So the fact that uh, you come in on the other side means you're likely to explore that side of the barrel find nothing and then go in. Whereas if we came in here, we might very well find the other two entrances. There's one out there on the bottom and there's one right over there behind this wall. This bad boy. So because they don't want you to discover those entrances, they actually set you up with your first encounter being on the far side. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to pop over to the far side. And you can tell me whether or not this was true for you. Maybe you did encounter it on this side first. I would be a little surprised, but it's possible. So we're just going to cut around here. Try not to clip um, any of the machinery. There we are. And you can see that from this side it looks almost the same, but it is pitch black. You can't tell anything. So you'd have a very hard time figuring out what you're even seeing. And I was so confused why I had such an easy time seeing what it was the second time I went in. And that's because the lighting on the two, on the two sides is completely different from each other. So when we're on this side, we have a slightly different experience. And most importantly, none of the secondary uh, entrances are available here. If we were to try and go around behind this ship, There's nothing here. It's it's just black. Moreover, this is a much darker entryway. This is something where if you don't have your flashlight on here, you are going to be uh, extremely lost. So you're definitely going to have your flashlight on, which is important because the next thing it's going to teach you is how to use your flashlight. So you're going to come over here. Your flashlight is going to be on like this. And you're going to be saying, oh, well, this is obviously the entrance, right? And we come over here, we go up these stairs. Oh, what's this? An unknown language. Well, that's strange, because this should know literally every language ever seen in this whole solar system. So this must be a new species. We'll call them the Potu. This must be an elevator. Now, depending, this is one of the things I'm not a big fan of. The, this flashlight, when you bring up your translator, it turns off your flashlight. I don't know whether that's intentional or not, but once you turn on your flashlight to see what the heck this center column is, it activates. And that'll teach you what the heck a flashlight is. Pretty nice, right? And then you'll come out here into this place, and what will you do? Well, that really depends on how much you look around, right? Will you notice any way out? There doesn't seem to be any other way out. The only thing we can do is make these things light up and rotate. Okay. Ah! Now this 
is one hell of an entrance. It even plays music while you're on these rafts, so you get a nice musical interlude as you're drifting along. This is how you're supposed to experience the, uh, the opening moments of The Stranger. Let me know if you, this is how you experienced it, but this is definitely how I experienced it, and it was really pretty cool. Worrying about this um, raft meant that I couldn't really take in the fact that we were in an O'Neill cylinder, but obviously uh, you catch on pretty quick that you can drive the raft like this. And hey, look, there's a light. And unless you actually try to dodge it, you're probably going to go to it, right? Oh. Oh. Well, hello. And that's how you're supposed to be introduced to this O'Neill cylinder. You're not really given all that much freedom to play around on your first visit. You're supposed to visit it like that, and you're probably visiting it pretty late in the cycle, probably just before the dam breaks. So, uh, you know, you look around, try and figure out what's going on, and that is the introduction. They've taught you that this is a new alien species. They've taught you that uh, light plays a role in this game. They've taught you how rafts work. They've taught you what an O'Neill cylinder is. And then they've dumped you into a rich space to explore. There's so many buildings to explore right here in this very first little village. Now, if you were to enter in the way I originally showed you, you'd pop up over there somewhere. Um, it's not that big a deal. Uh, the the actual angle is pretty similar between the two. But uh, that is why the entrance on the far side exists, if you didn't put that together to yourself. Uh, that, that entrance on the far side over there is your first entrance. It's the thing that, uh, that you see the first time you're here. And if we were to explore, the first building we see is this ruined building with nothing in it. Nothing except... Oh, an alien with two eyes. I'm a little bit disappointed in that, actually, um, because obviously the connotation here is that... Uh, this, the, the, the way that this game does it is that each generation of universe seems to have extra eyes. So we're on the four eye, the previous one was three eye, the previous one was two eye. But obviously, in most people's minds, the previous one being two eyed meant humans. Nope, it means Potu. That's what I call them. They're the Potu. Coming out of that ruin, you quickly discover that there is this whiskered building over here. It's got this mark. We find out this mark means that it's a cinema later on. Uh, and there's some stuff to see in here, too. More pictures. Furniture. And as we come up... A device! Now, at this stage of the game, we have no idea what this device does. And there's nothing in this area, immediately, that tells us. We can find out how to open doors. That is going to be important. Um, you know, you have to know how to open the doors. It's light-based. We can also discover that there are lamps that do fit into this, but at this stage, the only lamps we've seen have been burned out, so we would be putting burned-out lamps in. Even if we did have a lamp that wasn't burned out, we don't have anything to play, right? We don't have any, any tape decks. And there's no tape decks here. We haven't discovered anything. So this is the probably the intended progression, I would bet. And then, of course, you come around here, and what's this? It glows very brightly. It's in the shadows. It's like, hey! And you're like, oh, okay. Slides. And you're like, oh, you know what? I am so smart. S-M-R-T. Obviously, that is um, not the world's most difficult puzzle. And the best thing is... Oh, so you know you need a light source. This is a really great way to introduce these machines as a uh, as a you know slide machine that you need to keep your eyes out for. And you know that there will be a heavy focus on finding slides and delivering them to these machines to figure out what's going on. But you still don't have a light source for it. So you're still going to be looking around got all these empty things. you got more slides, but no light source. Hmm. And so now you have a hunt. You're on the hunt for a light source. And I think that that's really brilliant. They've already shown you that light is a critical part of this game, and the, you know, this adventure. And now they're telling you, yeah, it's critical. Go find a light source. 
Now, if your brain is working, you'll probably quickly realize that the building that glows in the dark is probably the light source you need, uh, or contains the light source you need, and you'll come on over here. Now, the reason we're going through this as, uh, you know, as, as the way that the most players would is because I want to show you how carefully sculpted this particular experience is. We're going to talk more generally about methods of constructing these experiences later. So this is full of lights. Now, if you've already played the game, you will notice that some of these have two lamps, and some of them only have one. Now, the reason for that is because some of these react when you take all the light sources away, and they know that you, being a new player, are only going to grab one light source. So no matter which one light source you grab, you're not going to accidentally trigger any late game content. Oh, right? So, if you were wondering why they were set up like that, that's the reason. They, they do a lot of obfuscation in this game where they're careful to mislead you. Like with those three entrances that we were talking about. Because two of the entrances are on the far side, and you probably don't even realize there was a far side, when you revisit the next time, you're not likely to look as hard and you're going to overlook them. Same basic idea, right? We think we've just solved the puzzle. In actuality, we've just walked past two or three other puzzles that we didn't even realize were puzzles. That's... I love it. That's brilliant. And then we can uh, flip through. So that's the Eye of the Universe. And uh, we can see that the Po 2... I hear the music? I love the fact that there's music with these. The Po 2 also heard the cry of the Eye. Now, those burned out elements are actually just records of them destroying their home world, strip mining their home world in order to come here. Um, the Potu are not known for uh, holding back. <laughs> so, let's talk a little bit about some of the things you didn't see. There are a number of things that you are likely to overlook on your first time visiting this particular, you know, part of the village and that's on purpose because you drifted down the river you actually came in over here which is at the far end of the village the next time you visit you're going to come out there that that is the that is the thing you normally find when you're visiting and you're going to be able to reach the near side of the village the near side of the village has a house that we didn't even see come on don't be a jerk Sometimes the water in this game gets really aggressive. It might be about to break. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it's getting towards the breaking time, which is the other major mechanic we have to discuss. So this is something that we find... Um, pretty quickly. And you can see that we can't get into this house because it is full of uh, death. So the idea here is you're not even going to see that the first time through, but of course the reason for that is because they don't want you to get distracted by it. And uh, instead they would like you to die from this, if possible. Now depending on exactly how fast you are, you may actually not get to this village until after this uh, um, dam has broke. If you get to the village after the dam has broke, then most of the houses are going to be partially submerged. The water level will drop from here quite a bit. But the thing about that is that the entrance you are using, which is over there, unless you happen to get to it right when the dam bursts, it's still going to be intact. You can see how the water is already starting to drain away from it. This is the entrance we came in through. From the outside, there is a door. From the inside, we couldn't see it. Here it is. So if you are late, if you come in late, then you will see a house with holes, but you'll still be in the right spot. So you will be able to move through this current in the same way. And so instead of, the nice, not, instead of a nice raft ride, you will get this um, drift, I suppose you could call it. And this is obviously not going to be quite as expressive. Uh, they did frame it so that you would probably get in here before 
um, before things get too rough. But even if you do get here late, all of the initial bits are still here. You still get to see the sign, you still get to get caught by this thing, uh, you still get to look at these places, with the biggest difference being that now um, you can't ever get the slideshow to work because uh, all of the lights have been dunked in the water and um, when that happens they go out. So the first time I played through, and I think that this is probably the same for a lot of people, I actually had the slides set up in the slide in the slide machine like uh, like we've got now, but I didn't get to put the light in or see the light show, uh, and I was still looking for a light when the waves hit, and uh, I didn't even know that there was a dam bursting. I was just like, oh no, water, because uh, I'd been inside the whole time, and of course. I had realized that there were lights over here because I just glanced at it in passing. But when I got here, they'd all been dunked into the water. And you can see that this is now very dark. You can't see any of these images. I wonder what that means. Oh, did you notice the first time you played? I didn't. I didn't realize that you could actually spot right away in your first cycle that there was something cool going on there. Either way, um, this is one of those things where the first few moments of the game give you a really strong goal. They tell you that you should learn how the slideshow machine works to learn more about the PO2. And then they dunk you in the water. After they get dunk you in the water, you're probably going to spend the rest of your journey kind of just bobbing around, seeing the ruins of places that you definitely want to visit when you are uh, when they're still intact on your next cycle, right? So you'll come over here and you'll see these, you know, this place here with the giant tower. Maybe I'll go inside the tower. You might even try and like grab a light from there to bring back, but unfortunately. Um, you won't be able to pull the light all the way back to the first village very easily because the water is rushing along too fast. And you're going to continue following the water around and around and around. And by now, it's actually too late for you to visit one of the um, places that you need to visit. There is a, a kind of a tower thing over there. You see it? That's a place that a lot of people overlook, and there are two reasons for that. The first reason is that you have to take the rightmost path, and that's not where the water naturally flows. And the second reason that you're likely to miss it is because once the wave hits, once the flood hits, you just can't get there anymore. So you float along down this river, and maybe you zap yourself to death on these electrical cables. Now, the basic idea here is that you're unlikely to reach the far end where the reservoir was originally. You're unlikely to make a full circuit. There are, there's too many things to see and too many dangers if you do try and make it. And that's why I think that a lot of people don't really even realize that the reservoir is a place they can visit until long after they've already scoured that first village clean, and even the second village. I think that's probably enough for a first visit. We'll talk more about the details of the reasons that things are set up the way they are in the next couple of episodes.